Hello, beautiful people! I hope everyone is good. If you are new here, my name is Tammy. If you are old here, hello, welcome. I hope you are well. And before we get into today's video, if you have not yet subscribed, what are you even doing? Hit the subscribe button right now and join our little family here on YouTube. So let me just explain what we are doing today. I asked you on Instagram story a couple days ago to send me any and all questions, totally unfiltered. I want to share more about myself with you guys and answer questions that I get all the time. So we can also just, you know touch on a couple things. I have my questions right here so we can just get straight into it. Let's go. And I actually saw you guys liked my responding to your assumptions video. So I think it's nice to mix these like sit down, like I'm just on my beanbag in my house, like these sit down videos with my very chaotic on the move vlog type videos, which are always super short. So today we get to catch up, we get to talk, let's get into it, let's answer your questions. Okay, so first question is probably the one I got the most, which is when are we getting the How Far podcast? Guys, I know, I know, um, it's been a year since season one came out. Honestly, if it was up to me, if it was up to Tosin, you guys would have season two already. As you can imagine, just getting us in the same room can be problematic, let alone like filming six episodes episodes let alone now like just trying to get them out to you so have we recorded season two in its entirety yes do i know what date is going to get to you no but i can promise the wait is not going to be much longer i'm sorry guys we miss you guys i miss having the podcast out in the world like having new episodes out and i promise you season two is going to be worth the wait so it's worth it don't worry Next question, favorite series or movie? I like this one. I'm actually like a low-key film buff. Like I'm really, really into movies. Of course, I like TV shows as well, but like growing up, I would just watch so many movies, old, new, serious, fun. I mean, obviously I kind of am in the acting world now, so it makes sense. But I would say my favorite movie or series. Okay, so right now for series, I love The Handmaid's Tale, such a good show. I'm watching Sex Education on Netflix. Uh, the King of Boys TV show is incredible and Nine Perfect Strangers on Amazon Prime. Loved, loved, loved that show as well. And then my favorite movie, I don't have a favorite movie, they're just movies I love in general. I would say top movies for me are... Why is this so difficult? Wait, let me think about this a bit longer. One eternity later. Okay, uh, I've had a think. Favorite movies for me are... I love... Okay, it depends the genre because I have very mixed taste. And I do like love old school stuff, but like a movie I love which is really really depressing is Manchester by the Sea. I don't think a lot of people <laughs> fight with that, but I love that movie. Um, I love of course like Parasite. Like you know when you watch a movie and you're just like, when you're watching it, you remember that day and that experience. So Parasite, anything by Jordan Peele. So I loved obviously Get Out, Us. Um, some more older school movies I love are Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Citizen Kane and then in terms of Nigerian movies love Lionheart such an amazing movie Isuken is one of my favorite Nigerian movies King of Boys of course one of my favorite movies coming from insanity I think had an amazing plot one of my favorite movies basically anything by Kulia Folayo <laughs> so Mokali Phone Swap and yeah so it's a mixed bag i mean that's why it's hard for me to say what my favorite series and movies are because i'm not a genre snob like i can watch and appreciate almost everything so whether that's nigerian movies korean movies american movies british movies i really just enjoy film like i enjoy it as a medium how do you cope with a long distance relationship and how do you make it work so smoothly? Personally, I don't struggle doing long distance. I think when you're so used to it at this point, it just becomes second nature. I know other people will really struggle, you know, going months on end without seeing their special someone. Personally, I like my own space. The person I'm with, busy, I'm busy. Like we enjoy our own space. And then when we're together, we like making the most of it. That's the thing is that I value 
value quality time over time. I would rather be with someone for five minutes and it be really connected and special than be with someone all the time and we're not even appreciating each other. So I think it's less about how much time you're spending and what you do with that time. And I found that, you know, when you have access to someone all the time, you do take them for granted, you know, and things can feel less special and less new and less fresh. So I would say that if you are struggling with long distance, the key is you need to speak on the phone a lot. Like you need to check in. It might be boring to be like, oh, how are you? How are you? Like small talk. I used to, I used to personally hate doing that small talk on the phone because I try to be on my phone as little as possible, but it helps. Uh, we used to do a Sunday Amazon Prime movie where we would w do a watch party on Amazon Prime, which is such a good idea. Like it's so smart that they have that. And basically you're watching the same movie at the same time. So when you hit pause, it pauses for both of you. And then we would like leave comments in the movie section. <laughs> but just, I don't know, like cute stuff like that really helps. But yeah, when you do see, you make the most of it. Making sure you're on the same page. So if you're feeling some type of way, just be honest. Honesty, honesty, honesty. You know your girl likes talking everything out. So just get it on the table. <laughs> no, you guys are actually wild. Um, if you were single, would you ever date a fan? And to that, um, do you know what? I say why not like as long as it's not like a obsession type thing which could freak me out then why not i mean never say never that's the thing i'm not someone who tends to want to judge that okay this person is a fan so they'll act this kind of way like it's cool it's fine if you come with with energy then why not but that made me laugh for sure <laughs> what's your biggest fear this is a deep one i would say that not making the most of of life like having lived my life and wasted precious moments or wasted quality times with the people i love or just wasting this like gift that is life you know tammy has to come and make it deep but you guys like we really only have one chance at this we have one shot at it we're only on earth once you know i just like to remind myself that okay every day is passing there might be things you don't want to do or there might be times where you're stressed it happens to everyone but like honestly fuck it like it's not that deep enjoy what you can of life um be nice to people make good relationships and enjoy yourself where you can um and also build things that you're proud of i think it's all a balance but yeah just Honestly, my biggest fear is not living life to the fullest. Hella cheesy, but like, that's that for me is the truth. Do you ever wish you weren't in the limelight? Yes, at times. Like, I think, obviously, I don't have it to an extent where my life is that affected. It will always be weird for me, obviously, going out into the world. It's even weird that, okay, I love it when I go out, I meet people, I take pictures, but it's weirder when someone is there that knows me and I don't find out after because they've taken like a secret photo of me or they're just staring at you and you don't know if they're just staring at you to stare at you or because they know who you are. I think that is that is what freaks me out more. It's just like losing that slight anonymity. But again, I mean, come on. <laughs> we're not talking Beyonce here like this is just kind of going about your day-to-day -day life and sometimes people knowing who you are so it's not that deep um, I would say the one thing about being in the public eye would be maybe always having to be switched on in terms of social media like I love what I do I love you know being in the influencer world I love creating content on social media and creating posts and sharing my life but you know of course there are some weeks you don't want to post and I do take those weeks now but before when I was trying to grow I would be online full stop and that's been the last eight years of my life and recently I did my first ever social media detox where I did a month of social media and it felt amazing I'm not gonna lie like it was just nice being living in the real world 100% of the time and also yeah like going to dinner and not taking a picture or going on a holiday and not taking a picture and you know I love vlogging with you guys but I only vlog one day of my trip now I don't vlog seven days because I want to actually not be on camera the entire time you know what I mean so I, I don't know if that makes sense I do love what I do, I have no complaints about it, but I guess sometimes being in situations and you not thinking that people will know who you are is weird. Yeah, just, just that social media life, you know, we always need to take, I think, little breaks 
How do you cope with criticism? Oh, okay. Maybe I don't get it on a level where I felt that it would truly affect me because I know, you know, peop some people in the public eye, like their level of criticism is insane. Pretty much I have... <laughs> I have like a a like protective shield of steel where when I do see bad things it happens sometimes of course like a little humble brag I don't know why like I just I cope with it pretty well like it doesn't really affect me I think when you've come to a strong place within yourself and you've done a lot of self work and you know your worth also you believe in the goodness of other people and you know that if someone is criticizing you unconstructively it's probably an issue with them. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I personally never come on the internet and trash someone's looks or trash someone's effort or trash someone's success. I honestly, like, I just look at those things and I'm like, it's just, it's just part of part of the job it's part of being online and you know if that's someone's way of coping with whatever's happening in their life then okay cool when it's constructive criticism then I actually I respect it especially when it's coming from people that I respect I look up to um, or if you guys are leaving actual constructive comments on my videos I listen to that because at the end of the day I'm making these videos for myself I'm making them for you guys and I want you guys to enjoy watching these things so criticism like that I genuinely appreciate um, anything that's just you know like a trash like <laughs> it's just it just like falls off my back and I don't think about it again so yeah but I mean some things have been you know my my dark knuckles shout out to my girls with dark knuckles I appreciate you it's been my weight it's been my acting ability it's been my style it's been it's been a lot it's been my relationship it's been loads of things so do you know what <laughs> I'm used to it um, and yeah you just have to be strong in here within yourself oh I love this one okay tips on growing an audience for influencing how I've created my brand in a way is that everything is supposed to look effortless and um, I think it's nice when influencers or social media creators talk about the business or the strategy that goes on behind what they're doing when I'm not acting or doing presenting or doing anything else my main job is being a social media influencer and that's how I monetize you know what I'm doing so you know I love giving tips on this because it took me a long time and there was a lot of self research self discovery but I think the tips my main tip on growing an audience is you have to think about who are you creating this for who is going to be looking and reading and into your content you know what's the point of what you are creating and I found a niche very early on you know being a young Nigerian girl who loved fashion Nigerian fashion African fashion but also high-end luxury fashion and I didn't see a lot of people in that space so for me that was my niche um, and what makes you different to everyone else like there are millions 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 of people on Instagram on TikTok on YouTube how is what you're creating different to all the other people doing it and how can you be different and you need to be consistent you have to post when I started off I was posting every single day I would have shoot days for like 12 hours where I might post I might shoot my content for a whole month you need to post um, and you have to engage with your audience you have to care about them you have to give them things that they enjoy if they're not enjoying a certain type of content unless you love 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 doing it like what's the point point? and um, the final thing I will say is also growing an audience you need to actually sort of know what what are you doing it for like what's your mission what's your ethos and um, have fun like, even though it's my job or whatever like enjoy it like if you get to be a full-time influencer you're blessed a lot of people are not able to do this or they have to work in full-time jobs on the side so do it for the right reasons don't do it to get a bag or to cash out and share something with the world that you are proud of yay a book question you guys know i love my books okay is there a book that changed your life if yes which one absolutely a book that I can honestly say changed my entire way of thinking is the untethered soul by michael a singer i think i got this as an oprah recommendation i can't remember but this book is amazing if you ever want to explore sort of you know how our minds can control and manifest so many things in our lives and how our thoughts really kind of manifest into who we are then read this book like if you like things by Eckhart Tolle and you like um, books about spirituality and manifestation and self-growth this is your book it's an amazing book 
Okay, let's get to them, the marriage questions. Guys, after how far, this was probably the most asked question. Do you see yourself getting married soon? <laughs> I always joke that when I get married, I'm not going to tell anyone for two years and you're gonna find out on my second year anniversary. That is honestly how I feel. I think that, you know, marriage is in everyone's time. Marriage, baby's family, everybody's time. There's no timeline, you know. I feel like when you think it's right, when God thinks it's right, that is when it's gonna happen. And you need to leave these things to the universe. <laughs> Um, so that's it. That is my point blank statement on the marriage question. Next, I love your skin. What do you use and do tips, please? Yes, I promise you guys I have not neglected or forgotten you. My next video, it is a full on skincare video. And in that video, I'll go into my full routine, tips, and also why I haven't done this video yet. There's actually a reason and I want to talk through that but comment below if you want anything more like anything more specific in that video because I'm going to film it later this week. What do you do to organize your day? Okay so as you guys probably know by now I am very very into my routines, my schedule, productivity, all that good stuff so I think I could definitely do a longer video about that if you want to see it let me know but I have a written diary I know old school very old school I'm just not a Google Calendar person sorry but I kind of do all my dates and scheduling in my written diary and then I have a bullet journal which is also like goals dreams gratitude lists but that also helps me organize what my year will look like in terms of making sure I'm actually working towards my goals on like day-to-day week-to-week month-to-month basis because we can set these like huge goals but unless we're actually working on things actively during the week you know it's harder to actually get to those places right so i have those and then i have uh for my work schedule i integrate those things into like a google doc i use for me and my team um so those are really like my three go-to's diary bullet journal google docs that's it like i like everything in one place i don't want things scattered across so those things have really honestly changed my life and yes i can do a longer video soon on how i do like my morning and evening organizational things um because i like to start my day knowing what i'm doing and end my day knowing what i've done and what i have to do tomorrow worst heartbreak experience okay this is gonna call me out <laughs> This question is screaming, it's screaming at me um, because I'm going to sound like a savage but I've never been like, you know that fully, you know the one you see in the movies when they're in bed crying, eating ice cream, it's never been me. I can't lie, it's never been me, like I am a comeback kid. <laughs> in every aspect of my life like if i'm feeling shitty about something give me 48 hours and maybe it's bad maybe it's good but if something like a breakup you know when it has happened like i'm that girl who like that friday night i'm out like i just like to forget my problems keep it moving and be like okay what did i learn from this and what is next we move <laughs> we move i can't come and die like over a man i cannot i cannot oh okay we have we had a couple hair questions and i'm excited to get into this because i've had like very very big change in my hair recently so my hair journey is for my entire life like i don't know i would just do braids my hair was natural and um i don't know like i'll just do different stuff you guys know i like changing my hair a lot and then guess who six weeks ago six weeks ago relax the hair my hair is now relaxed i went from the ages of zero to 25 without relaxing my hair and then i was just like do you know what let me try it out if i don't like what it's doing to my hair I'll cut my hair off and it will grow back. It's okay. Like, hair is hair at the end of the day. So, I'm now on that relaxed vibe. I relaxed it at the Mimi et Mina salon in Notting Hill. I would definitely recommend. It's an amazing salon. Um, the Una Mimi. Amazing, beautiful. Love her. So, I did my relaxer there. And guess what? Like, I honestly, the only change I've seen is that doing my gel and stuff is easier but when my hair is actually gelled it doesn't look that different and um i can really blow dry and straighten my hair myself when i want to even though i'm trying not to do heat and as you can see now my hair is in a protective style so i'm still like really looking after my hair i do my weekly deep condition um i oil it i moisturize it i really don't like dry ends and dry hair so i'm looking after it but yeah my hair is relaxed the secret is out i know there is a lot of um, hate or dislike towards not, uh, relaxed hair but I don't know it looks cute to me 
I don't know if it ruins your hair. Who knows? Who can say? I'm just like, when that day comes, I will deal with it. <laughs> you know, nothing is that deep to me. Um, but it would be interesting to know why so many people made that transition to natural. Because as someone who has never relaxed my hair in my life until now, I don't know what the pros and cons are. So you guys let me know. But I am also going to be dyeing my hair soon. If you guys saw this tweet, I'm going to be dyeing my hair soon. And I just have this, I think I just have this whole attitude towards life at the moment. Like, life is short. Have fun, enjoy yourself. If my hair falls off, isn't like you know what I mean? Like it's not that deep. As long as I have health, I have happiness, nothing else matters. Okay, was UCL your first choice of university? Yes, it was actually. I really wanted to go to UCL. Um, I'm not even sure why. <laughs> Maybe because it was in London or it just seemed like a really, really great university and I had an okay-ish time. It was okay. Like, do I wish I had explored the world for university? Yes. But I had, you know, I got a really great degree. I did history of art, as some of you know. Yeah, UCL was a good experience. Uh, would I recommend it? I think it depends on what you're studying. I know they're great for like medicine and like certain courses. But if you want that true university experience, I think a campus university like outside of a major city might be better. So yeah, those are my thoughts on UCL. What's your favorite country in the world and why? Country as a tourist would be Japan. <laughs> I'm always raving about Japan. I had a trip two years ago. If you guys are oh, oh, OGs, you'll have seen my vlogs from that trip. So it's just such a beautiful place. Like it has such a rich culture. The people are amazing. The food, Jesus Christ, the food, the fashion, just the, the, the vibes are immaculate. Like, let's just say that. So Japan and other places I've loved. Anywhere, I guess, that has like rich culture in terms of food language and like buildings like i'm very big on architecture so those are really the things i look at next question do you want to continue your acting career yes absolutely um i get asked a lot about when my next movie or project is coming out and honestly guys i wish i could say tomorrow like i really miss being on set i miss the whole process getting into a character um to be honest it's been a mix of having my debut like in the height of covid <laughs> <laughs> and then waiting for several projects so either waiting for projects to begin so i'm signed on to a few things but i'm waiting a mixture of auditioning for things and not getting it which happens all the time in acting or being offered parts and them not seeming totally right for me or not fully uh, relating to the script or it could just be scheduling and i'm not able to do the movie in the time frame so there are many different conflicts but soon 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 i hope your perception on religion and faith and yes i got a lot of people asking me if i'm religious or if i'm christian and yes i am proudly christian i like how you sort of question this as your perception because i think everyone's journey you know with god is very special to them and that's something i try to keep private because in my humble opinion it should be one-on-one -on -one, um and you should be trying to grow that relationship you know as much as you can some ways you know in a private setting so no i am religious and you know proudly Christian you know my faith is something that I'm always trying to work on and but also being mindful of you know people on different journeys in terms of you know what they do with their faith Tammy we need a slick bun and no makeup makeup tutorial um the bun I haven't done I did like my everyday makeup tutorial on TikTok linked below so check out my TikTok I'm new there guys um I can do one on YouTube definitely and this slicked back bun <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna get there once these braids are out i will do it for you guys i will do it for you guys that is really my go-to hairstyle skincare product you take on a deserted island sunscreen i am such a big supporter of sunscreen um especially like black people i think we neglect sunscreen so much because we believe okay we're born in these sunny hot climates so naturally we should have evolved to not need it but i just saw the biggest change in my skin when i started wearing sunscreen every single day even if i'm just by the window at home all day i'll wear sunscreen um so the key is to find sunscreens that won't block your face or break you out so non-comogenic i don't know if i've said that correctly 
but non-comedogenic sunscreens. Right now, I'm loving the Elta MD uh, SPF 46 and the Murad Environmental Sunscreen, both amazing. That is my Desert Island Beauty product. How do you write YouTube scripts? I never have a script for my videos. <laughs> Maybe I should. I don't know. Maybe I need to get to that level, but I really just sit down and talk. I don't know. Maybe at some point, my videos will get a little bit more high production, but I just like sitting down and talking to you guys like no shaka like just chill like talk on that level so I don't know has it always been easy for you to love yourself I'm gonna put it next to what message would you send to a young Tammy in the world right now so no I think that you know like the journey to self-love can be really long and it can be very confusing especially when you are a teenager teenage me was kind of unsure about a lot of things. I always had this confidence, but un underneath it was kind of like lack of direction. Like I didn't really know who I was, what I was and what I wanted to be. Um, and it took a lot of like my early 20s to get there. I'm so grateful for that. But the message I would have for a young Tammy is like, who cares? Like if you want to do this thing, if you want to try this thing, if you want to go to this place, like it doesn't matter, right? Um, I just, I obviously thought that, you know, my youth would last forever. So I would tell her that, like, life is short, right? And you're only going to be a teenager for so long and that's it. Now you're out in the world by yourself. And your adult life is much, much longer than your child or teenage life. So really enjoy those years. Um, you know, enjoy that lack of true responsibility or that ability to be young and a bit wild and a bit carefree. So... That would be my advice for her. What's your take on feminism? I am definitely a self-proclaimed feminist. Uh, I believe in, you know, not just supporting women superficially, but in your day-to-day -day life as much as you can. Really, for me, the key proponents of feminism is protecting women physically, so in terms of violence on women and sexual violence on women, and also protecting them monetarily in terms of the workplace. So... You know, if you are in a position of power and you have a male employee and a female employee and they're doing the same job, the woman is earning less, you need to ask yourself why that is. You know, I'm, I'm so grateful to be an ambassador for a organization like WARF. Um, and I think that's really kind of put my beliefs into practice. If you haven't heard of WARF um, and you haven't seen the work I've done with them already, I will link their website below and they are an incredible organization that helps the victims or survivors, I prefer survivors, of sexual violence in Nigeria. Um, they have an incredible center and they do so much work to help rehabilitate these young, young girls and women who have just been through the most awful traumatic things you can even imagine. So, you know, I'm so grateful to be on the WARF team and I'm so grateful that they would have had me. He has to do more work where we can. How do you get out of a depressive state? You know, a lot of people deal, deal with depression and I, I wouldn't say I've ever been completely, totally depressed for m months on end, but have I had periods of, you know, being in, in that state? Yes. And I think actually I probably deal with anxiety much much more anxiety and the very rare but very intense panic attack <laughs> so that's something i can relate to and if it's available to you therapy is an amazing tool you know the things that have helped me when i've been in those places are and again these are the last things you want to do which is so ironic but it's you know looking after yourself um trying to get up out of bed each day take a shower wash your face walk outside eat food that's nourishing and fueling your body talking to someone like talk 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 and if you're someone like me who keeps things to themselves um like like if i'm going through something i probably won't talk to people and that's something i've been working on but you need to open up to people you can trust and that's also the key so don't just like don't tell everyone because sometimes they give you feedback that's not helpful and it can be quite superficial like oh just just smile just, you know you know things like that like when you're in those places it doesn't help so you need to be able to vent to someone journal get your feelings out do things that you enjoy like watching a movie listening to music cooking food walking and just know that it's going to pass like this will not be your life forever right it's hard to be grateful at those times but are you healthy 
Um, do you have a roof over your head? Do you have food? And just breathe and breathe and breathe. And of course, I do a lot of meditation and yoga and that has really helped. What is your best investment so far? I love this question. Shout out to my VC girls, my private equity mamas. This is something else I do on the side that I'm not very open about, but I would say best or biggest investment was in a sector I can't say, but it was essentially uh, co-buying a company. Yes, that is really all I can say. I'm not the expert on investments and investing your funds into businesses or being an angel investor or a venture capitalist. I'm not that person. It's just something I do for my own personal finances. So there are other resources on YouTube that will help you better. But I will say as a young woman, you know, if you're making money, save some, spend some, invest some. Um, always look to the future and you want to be on yourself at some point <laughs> what advice can you give to people who don't know what they're passionate about yet i love this question um and it might seem like everyone knows what they want to do or everyone loves what they do or everyone has a calling and if you can't find yours sit down just like almost like you're meditating close your eyes and think about the things that make you happy like what do you enjoy doing like what could you do for six seven ten 24 hours straight and it wouldn't feel like work right that is probably your passion so for me that's various things that's acting that's creating content that is even like things like yoga and being around people i love and socializing and walking it could be anything so some might help you with your career so for example if that's cooking for you maybe you should be a chef if you're able to for example if that's taking photos maybe that's a photography if that's um, debating and talking and research maybe that's law um, if it's saving people's lives maybe that is being a doctor I don't know basically but I really feel like if you put your mind to it and you're lucky enough to have the resources to get that head start you can almost do anything you're passionate about you know that could be planting flowers and you could be the biggest landscape gardener you know in your region or it could be a being a music producer or it could be being a vet or it could be being a farmer. I mean, it could be anything, right? It could be tech, it could be um, um, engineering. So I think you just have to sit down and really think about what you enjoy doing. For example, if you enjoy watching movies, it could be that maybe you should go into directing or um, maybe you know you should be a journalist who is a culture crit critic. It could be anything. So just sit down, think about what makes your heart race, what makes you smile was I miss you bad by Mr. Easy about you and him <laughs> you'll have to ask him that question I really don't know I will say I don't think so to be totally honest I really don't think so um but the one song I can say I was an inspiration for was uh Suffer Head we talked about that on the podcast so <laughs> I mean let me not blush too much have you witnessed racism and what was your reaction this question is so interesting because any other like nigerians who like who moved from nigeria to the uk for school or go between nigeria like live between nigeria and the uk a lot will maybe get this that it's like so jarring when you go from like nigeria where it's only black people so if people are being rude you're like okay people are rude to like being in the uk where you're actually a minority or like tra when i have to travel and you, you do get these instances of racism of course it happens to everyone like it's gonna happen regardless um so yes definitely even like racial slurs the whole thing okay i've changed the framing a bit sorry guys i've been filming for so long so if i look like i'm in a different place ignore it <laughs> um okay so the next question we have is how long did it take from your early blogging days to get invited to shows? And also, how was your time at Milan Fashion Week? So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed my Milan vlog. I know it was not the most organized thing, but I was genuinely like trying to just sort out my life a bit. And it was my first day and it was my first show. But the rest of the time was amazing. I really fell in love with Milan again. Just the food, the architecture, the vibe, everything. And yeah, so I can't wait for next season and hopefully we'll be doing you know more shows next time. But it was amazing. And yeah, for the blogging, honestly, my first four years of blogging, I didn't get invited to any shows. So you need to build a profile, obviously, build relationships with brands. And you know, if I would get invited to the opening of a shoebox, I would go. Just because networking is so important for this industry. So you definitely need to 
put in your hours, put in your time to get to that stage. But I found that once one door opens, like the rest of them will open consecutively. But it's just getting that first door to come down that like you need to put in years of, of banging, right? This metaphor is <laughs> getting too specific. We'll bang on that door for years and years and years, and then the rest of the doors will open. What's your pet peeve that we don't know about? Uh, I don't like it when people are bad at eye contact. I don't like weak handshakes. I don't like slow walkers. <laughs> pet peeves are meant to be irrational, so don't even ask me why, but those are my things. And people who um, are on their phones all the time, which is funny because like so much of what I do is on my phone. But like, like the entire night, it's like you're just on your phone the whole time. It's just, just, ah, it's boring. Okay, so teddies, teddies, or th I said teddies, teddies. I love my teddies. If you're a teddy watching, I love you. Teddies get together soon. Um, teddies is our little fan base right here. Famies, teddies. Um, yeah, I would love to start doing meet and greets again. I used to do them ages ago. But it'll be cool to do a couple more meet and greets. So what cities? Lagos, Abuja, Accra, London. I don't know. Let me, let me know, guys, where you would want to do maybe meet and greets. Okay, next question. Do you listen to Blackpink? Notice you follow Jenny. Yes, I mean, I only just started listening to K-pop and Blackpink. Um, but I watched the Blackpink documentary. And when I was watching it, I was like, these girls, like their style is in same so i follow all of them now i love their style i love their igs um so yeah love jenny love rose love all of them quick fire questions because guys you guys sent so many questions and so many good ones so now i'm just gonna read out like one answer re responses to these in your opinion what's something money can't buy health are you more of a mummy's or daddy's girl both how old are you 25 what's your favorite place to eat in london lpm what's your annoying habit impatience one message to your fans i love you guys daddies i love you what do you wish people would stop asking you p.s i love you i love you when are you getting married <laughs> fun things to do with friends apart from partying alternatives to a night out baking movies golf painting no need to party every time. What is your alcoholic drink of choice when you go out? I love wine, like I love white wine, but for like a night out, I'm usually on some form of tequila, not by choice, but I, I don't like, I mean tequila or vodka, eh, vodka is a bit hit or miss, but now I think I'm liking the more brown Hennessy Jameson type vibes. Actually, do you know, I'm not that picky, as long as I have something sweet to mix it with and the vibes are good. I'm good. So that is everything. I mean, I've been here for like three hours. So that's a lot of questions. Um, but I hope you enjoyed getting to know me a bit more. Comment down below what you want to see me do next. If you enjoyed this video, what other types of like sit downs? Like, I want to know from you guys what sit down type videos do you want? And if you have not yet subscribed after that two hour long video, what are you even doing? Hit the subscribe button right now and i will see you in the next video and you guys look after yourselves peace love health i love you bye 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 <laughs> bye my legs bye 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 bye